Hey guys, this is Patrick from SCH, and today we're gonna take a look at the ASRock Industrial Nook Box 1260P. And that one is, uh, it's, uh, no, actually it's this one over here. If you think that these two boxes in front of you look pretty darn similar, um, well, they do, and we're gonna talk a lot about that in this review and this video. Now with Nook in the name, you would definitely expect that this competes in that kind of small form factor PC, but not just small form factor, I mean like the Nook form factor, which is much smaller, which is exactly what this is. And these are really designed for Azrox industrial customers. And there, there are definitely different versions of these. And a good example of that is that this is the Intel Alder Lake version. And then we have the AMD Ryzen 5000 series version over here. Now this one, we already did a review of, and in fact, this was my first review that I did in New York City Central Park. But this one is the Intel version, and we just did it in the studio because Brian did all the B-roll and photos for it and said, hey, it's ready for you to go and do go do your review. So uh, that's what we're doing today. And my plan is to compare and contrast these two units because really we have a good AMD versus Intel, same generation, and really, you know, looking at the differences between what these are delivered to customers, you know, really designed for by ASRock Rack. But the other side to it is I just kind of want to talk about some of the things that folks found that they didn't like about the AMD version and that may be fixed in the Intel version, but I also think that the AMD one is good as well. So we have a lot to definitely cover, and I think the first thing I want to do is really talk about the hardware. So the basic game plan is we're going to do the hardware overview, then we're going to do our performance, and then we'll do power consumption and noise, and I want to get to our key lessons learned that we always do in all these STH mini PC series system reviews, and then uh, finally just wrap up. Now as a quick note, we don't have a sponsor for this video, so if you do want to support STH, and you know, so we can actually go buy systems like this, what you can do is you can join the STH YouTube channel down below, there's a little membership, and that just helps us go and have the budget to go and buy these STH mini PCs. So if you can support us, that'd be awesome. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is just the size of these two units. Um, they're actually the same size, and I'm gonna read this because uh, I can't remember this, but uh, this is a 110 by 117 and a half by 47.85 millimeters. And these are the exact same size. I looked up the specs and I have it over there. They're, they're actually the same size and the chassis looks basically the same between the two of them. And looking at the front of this chassis, you'll see pretty much the same types of features as well. We have two USB-C ports as well as a type A port. These are all USB 3 ports, and then we also have a headset jack. Now, the two USB-C ports also have an alt display port mode, so you can run two more displays if you use these two type C ports as uh, display outputs. You can actually run a total of four displays, which we'll see the other two in the back, but you run four displays on the on this little system, which is awesome. I mean, these things are absolutely tiny, right? Now, moving to the back of the unit, we have our power input. We have two USB type A ports. We then have an HDMI port and a display port port and then two network ports. And I just wanna contrast this a little bit between the Intel and AMD version. Because on the AMD version, you'll see that there's one port that's labeled as a two and a half gig port, and then there's just kind of your normal little network port. And then on the Intel version, it looks like you just have the two little logos for just the little network port. But it turns out that these are actually the Intel i225 based NICs. And so these are actually both Intel two and a half gig ethernet NICs. It's just kind of funny that we have the same chassis, we have a similar form factor, same generation, and yet the uh, just the little icons mean different things between the two, the AMD and the Intel one. I just I just think that's kind of fun. To me though, the other big change is the fact that we actually get USB 3 ports instead of USB 2 ports on the Intel one. So that is a little bit of an upgrade in terms of connectivity. I think that you know Intel in this generation with Alder Lake is just a, a step ahead probably of where AMD is. The other big thing that I just want to point out is that these are not fanless units. There are definitely fans in here, and you can definitely hear them. Um, but on the sides of these units, there are vents, and so you kind of hopefully see that a little bit here, but it just means that these are not, when we say that this is an ASRock industrial thing, these are not like fanless sealed PCs or with gaskets and stuff like that. These are very much just kind of, you know, there's there's airflow going through these things. Okay, so opening the system and getting inside, there's four screws on the little rubber feet and then you, uh, you can get inside. Um, they're not captive screws, so you gotta make sure you keep them and it takes forever. Alex just watched me, uh, while well, he's probably editing this, take forever to actually open this thing. Mm, so it's taking forever. Still going, chimney Christmas. But anyway, uh, this is what the system looks like inside and we've already configured it. So I just wanna show you what this is configured with. So the first thing that you're gonna see here is that we have two SODIMM slots. Now this is DDR4 memory still. This is not DDR5, which saves you a couple bucks. And also we're using DDR4 3200 memory in this. 
On the other side, we have a M.2 slot, and that M.2 slot is, uh, we just have a Western Digital Blue because um, that's number one, what we had, and number two, I tend to like to use lower power SSDs in these form factors, just because if you get a hotter SSD, there's just not that much airflow inside, and so they tend to overheat. And we see that, you know, not just in these little systems, but we also see it in some of the fanless units, like over my shoulder over there. I will note on the top of the this lid, there is a little cable here, and you could, if you want, put a two and a half inch SSD and mount that using this little power and data cable into the system. Um, I, I just personally think that, you know, you run into a situation where you just don't have enough airflow for a two and a half inch drive. So if you do want a two and a half inch drive, I would probably say, um, you know, try another one. The other thing though, is that in terms of this, this solution with the little cabling, I think that the Asus system that we looked at that's in this class, that had a little bit more interesting maybe of a mounting solution on the lid than this. This is uh, pretty rudimentary, but I don't really think that you're, you're supposed to use it anyway. So just going through this real quick, one thing I do want to point out is that we do get a Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 solution in this system. This comes with it and that's standard. We didn't have to add this, although we did have to add the memory and the SSD, but you get this little card and this is, I think, a CNVI solution. So just if you want to upgrade in the future, that's something important to know. This is based on the Intel AX211. And so that's a little different because the AMD version, that was based on the MediaTek or AMD branded MediaTek solution. And so just from a standpoint of, you know, networking, I think that having two Intel two and a half gig NICs in this solution, plus the Wi-Fi 6E from Intel, that's a little bit better than the AMD solution where you have the MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E, and then you have one two and a half gig ethernet port and one one gigabit ethernet port. And those are both real tech on the AMD one. And for anyone wondering why you always see these G-Skill rip jaws, we're actually not sponsored by G-Skill or anything like that. Uh, it's just that these things work in like absolutely like all the systems that we use. And so we have literally a stack of these 32 gig SODIMs because we just put them in everything these days because they just work. So um, we'll probably leave an affiliate link down in the description if you want to go and buy these things. I highly suggest uh, these units because they're just awesome and we use them everywhere. One small item while I'm putting this SSD in here, I just want to point out that one thing you have to worry about a little bit with mounting this SSD is that you do get a very slight bend um, in the SSD if you tighten this too hard and the screw isn't that big. I don't love the mounting solution in these, but um, it works and it works, it seems to work no problem. They run no problem, but um, I, I just frankly would, would like there to be a little bit nicer or a little bit more level of a solution in here so you don't have to worry about an SSD bending. Now I don't wanna mess it up so that way you can hear what this sounds like if you were to buy it, but I, on the other side of this motherboard, what you will see is that this has the Intel Core i7-1260P. And that is a four performance core plus eight efficiency core CPU. And uh, you know, it's, it's actually not a bad option. So with the AMD, we got eight basically performance cores. With this solution, we get 4P8E. Okay, so next I wanna talk a little bit about the performance that we saw of this on this unit. And the fact of the matter is that overall the performance was within, I don't know, maybe 10% or so of the AMD based solution. However, this uh, in our testing was not faster than the AMD Ryzen, you know, the 5800U. This was a little bit slower, but just by a little margin. So I wouldn't say, you know, unless, unless you really need the absolute best performance in something like this, I would say that they're close enough that they're pretty much the same or similar levels of performance. There is something though that I think that this unit has, which is that this has the Iris XE graphics. And you know, that is a, a little bit newer of a solution. And I think that that was a really nice thing that Intel put in here. And their integrated graphics are actually pretty good. They're uh, discrete graphics. I think the drivers are still catching up, but the, the integrated graphics are certainly, um, you know, used by a lot of different folks. So I, I do think that, you know, you can look up how fast an XE graphics uh, solution is, but at the same time, that's nice. The other nice thing though, is that there are a lot of folks that buy systems like this and expect to do things like use the quick sync video for encoding or transcoding video. And so I think if you're one of those folks that you really want the AMD encode decode, then having the Intel solution versus the AMD solution is just gonna be a big deal because there's some software packages that just uh, really prefer the Intel solution over the AMD solution. So if you need it, that might be a reason to get this one. With that, I think it's time to switch over and look at some power consumption numbers, right? 
Okay, so for power, we now have the power meter here, and you can see the power consumption. We'll show you that in a sec. But uh, you know, in terms of power, we get the same Ockbell 90 watt power brick that we got with the Ryzen based unit. So, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go and insert the power into the little nook box over here and then turn it on. Okay, you might have been able to hear that actually turn on. And then uh, we're gonna just show you the power consumption over here while I'm just chatting a bit. Okay, so this system is now booted into Windows 11 Pro. And something that we saw is that this thing's actually running at about 15, a little over 15 watts. And this is pretty common, just what we've seen this thing idle at in Windows 11. And I don't really know 100% why. I double checked that we're on the same balanced power plan that we were on with the AMD Ryzen one that was getting a little over 10 watts or so. Um, and so I just kind of think that this is definitely uh, quite a bit higher. And then the other thing that I think is really interesting about this is that you can kind of hear it. Uh, hopefully you guys have heard this a little bit here. I'll, I'll hold up to the mic so you can hear. It's now, uh, it's now about that far away. Okay, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run a Geekbench 5 Pro. I'm just gonna run this on this little box here so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. And also what we're gonna do is we're gonna at the same time look at the power consumption over here. So you can see on the single threaded results, we're at about, you know, maybe 22 to 25 watts, but the sound is not too bad. Okay, so now the system is starting to do the multi-threaded benchmarks. And what you're seeing is that we're hitting about 50 watts in terms of our maximum, which is quite a bit more than we saw on the AMD Ryzen side. Okay, so now we're getting a 50 plus watt and you can hear it. Okay, so the run's over and we're getting back down into that 15, 16 watt range, just kind of cooling down. Okay, so now that that's done, uh, let's just kind of, what do we learn from that whole exercise? Because hopefully we learned something. Uh, big things I think that we learned are that the power consumption of this unit is a little bit higher than the AMD unit, which I was a little surprised about really. I thought that the Intel one would be much more competitive, especially in the lower power segment. Um, but this definitely uses more power. In our AMD unit, we were talking pretty much 10 to 35 watts as being our range. With this system, you know, we're probably in the 16, 15, 16 at the low end and probably at the high end, we're maybe 50 to 55 watts. And so that's actually a pretty big difference between the Intel and AMD solutions. Also just on our Geekbench runs and most of the things that we ran, we got better performance on the AMD versus the Intel solution. So Intel here is using more power and it's it's definitely, uh, it's not shown as being as fast. That was a big surprise surprise for me at least because I thought that this would be better because if you have E cores, the idea is that you're using the E cores instead of P cores and that allows you to hit lower power states, but apparently that's not happening. And also I just wanna point out that Ganesh over at Anantech, he did these two units as well and those were supplied by ASRock. So he went in and like did all kinds of performance, you know, tunings and new bios like beta bios and all that kind of stuff to get results. And we're not doing any of that stuff. We're just using the base bios that came with the units. And the reason for that is frankly, I think that's what most people are going to use, right? They're not gonna go and like go chase down new bios maybe you will but just i think most people are just gonna uh, use what's available and not go and chase down things and, and engineer resources to be able to come up with a better number for the intel unit so um you know i just kind of think that that's one of those ones where you know we just kind of came up with the fact that the amd one is faster in this form factor than intel and uh that's that's what we learned it's also using less power something i will say though is that this one sits about 10 meters or so uh in the other room over there where we kind of stage some of the things before we bring them into the studio. And it's just kind of sitting on a little table there and we just kind of use it as just kind of a PC for that area. And and I will say that every once in a while, this thing spins up and I can actually hear it from the other room. And I expect this one to do the same. This one feels like it's a little bit louder, maybe at idle, but they should be pretty similar. Okay, let's talk about pricing just for a sec. That's really important with these. So when we purchased these units, we got them for pretty much the same price. I think there's about a $20 difference. And I looked today as I'm recording this video, there's also still about a $20, $20, $30 premium for the Intel version versus the AMD version. The AMD version, you can usually find for about $620, $630. Sometimes there's coupons where it's considerably less. Sometimes this one has coupons. So depending on what has coupons, what's on sale on a given day, um, you know, that may change. But it seems like just the as we've been tracking these for the last couple months, the Intel version tends to be maybe 20 to $30 more. But which one is better? And I guess that gets us to our key lessons learned section. 
Okay, so for our key lessons learned, I think we should learn something whenever we do these, and I think this is a pretty easy one, right? Because we have the AMD one, we have the Intel one, the head-to-head, -head, same form factor, same little box. I mean, what are really the differences? Which one is better, right? The Intel one uses more power. It probably because of that's a little bit louder and it costs a couple dollars more and it's not necessarily faster in all of the benchmarks that we run. Whereas the AMD one um, is the opposite of that. So I think my knee jerk reaction would be to tell you that the AMD one is vastly superior, but I also think that might be the wrong answer. And let me just kind of show you why. When we go back to the NICs at the back, you have the Realtek NICs and you have two and a half and one gig versus two, two and a half gig NICs. If you wanted to use this as like a virtualized firewall or router or something like that, and you wanted to have this solution, um, frankly, this one is better, right? This is this is what you would want. I'd want two, I'd want Intel Nix number one and number two, I'd want two two and a half gig versus a one and a two and a half gig. So I, I do think that from a connectivity standpoint, that's good. Also, you'll notice on the back that this has USB two, this is USB three. The Wi-Fi in this one is the Intel AX211 versus the MediaTek that's in the AMD one. And then also just the GPU IP, if you're doing the video transcoding and stuff like that, the Intel XE graphics are definitely better than, uh, you know, the, the Ryzen 5000 mobile series, right? So, so I think that it's an interesting, a very interesting thing, depending on what your use case is. There's some people that are gonna say, hey, give me the lower power, give me the AMD cores because it's a little faster, like that's what I want. And there are other people that are gonna say, hey, I prefer the better connectivity, I prefer the better video transcoding and stuff like that that you get with the Intel box. And so I, I think that between the two, I, I really think that it's a struggle to tell you which one's better because they're just, um, they're the same form factor, but depending on what you're looking for, they are very different at what they're good at. And just another thing to be mindful of is that the M.2 slot on the Intel solution is a PCA Gen 4 one where you only get PCA Gen 3 on AMD. But what I will tell you though, and I just mentioned this, like this one, we use this all the time and uh, this one will be taking up a pretty similar one now that the review is done. Uh, these little units are absolutely awesome. I love them. I know there are folks that are gonna say, hey, you know, these aren't configured. They're 650 bucks, so they're a little bit more expensive. I get it guys, um, you know, Azrox, I guess a bigger vendor than some of the other ones out there. And uh, so I, I just kind of think that, you know, th these these are different than some of the other solutions and they're pretty darn good for what they are. And frankly, we have a ton of these little mini PCs, but for little desktops, these are the ones that we tend to use because, um, you know, we have a stack of them and these are the ones that we end up pulling. So I think that says a lot. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at this little Azrox industrial nook box. This is an awesome little unit and uh, have a lot of fun reviewing these little ones as part of the STH mini PC series. I hope you like it. And if you did, well, give this video a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.